This video is a review of the chapter on the principles of quantum mechanics. So first we start with the postulates of quantum mechanics, which are just kind of five general statements, which are not uh, said to be proven in any way, but we just take to be true and then see to what logical consequences they lead. The first is that the wave function specifies the entire state of the system. That is, if we have a, spe a wave function with it, which is specified in both all spatial dimensions and time, that any measurable property is known if you know this exact wave function. And the interpretation of this is that we have the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function times some small region of space is the probability of finding a particle in that small region of space. The second is that for every classical mechanical observable, that is every measurable property like position, momentum, or energy, there corresponds a linear Hermitian quantum mechanical operator. And we go into detail there about what exactly linear and Hermitian means, but this is why operators are so critical in quantum mechanics because they give us a way to measure properties and get back to uh, classical uh, things. Third is that if we have a wave function and we try to measure a, a certain property like if this were the operator for position or momentum if we are trying to measure a property we are only going to get eigenvalues of that particular operator for our measurement so if we try to measure uh, momentum we will only get momentum eigenvalues out we will not get uh, expectation values necessarily but will the average values but we will get only the specific eigenvalues Fourth is about these calculations of expectation values or average properties. You can get things like average energy, average momentum, etc. from this. And this is the integral of the complex conjugate of the wave function times the operator acting on the wave function integrated over all space divided by a denominator of the integral of the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function again integrated over all space. If your wave function is normalized then this bottom part here is simply one and you can ignore it. And the fifth and final postulate of quantum mechanics is that the system evolves in time according to the time dependent Schrodinger equation. This varies from the time independent Schrodinger equation h psi equals e psi and that we have our explicit time dependence here that the Hamiltonian acting on the time dependent wave function equals the square root of minus one times h bar times the partial derivative with respect to time of that time dependent wave function. Then following on from there we have uh, many other general uh, principles of quantum mechanics that we're interested in. Um, operator commutators are when you have the uh, difference between uh, operator B acting, then operator A acting, and operator A acting, then operator B acting. And if this commutator, indicated by these square brackets and comma here, is zero, then A and B are said to commute. <clears throat> and the most famous commutator in quantum mechanics is between position and momentum, or momentum and position here, and that is equal to minus i h bar. So position and momentum do not commute. And the Heisenberg uncertainty principle uh, falls right out of that uh, property there that they do not commute. As far as Hermitian operators, uh, we can define a, an operator being Hermitian if it obeys the following property that the integral of the complex conjugate of the wave function times the operator acting on the wave function over all space is equal to the integral of the wave function times the complex conjugate of the operator acting on the complex conjugate of the wave function. That seems rather abstract, but uh, we see more useful examples of what that means uh, in the future. Dirac notation is a nice way to have some shorthand for indicating some uh, wave functions and integrals and becomes very useful later when we have many, many of these integrals occurring and we really want to save ourselves some handwriting headache. And this is just a, something called a ket, this straight line, then a curved uh, line out on the edge here, representing the wave function, and then the bra, which is uh, the reverse of that, representing the complex conjugate. Together they form a braquette or a bracket. Thus Dirac thought he was being very clever there. And this uh, braquette here ind indicates the integral of psi star psi over all of space. You could have some state m and some state n there. And you can also have this type of integral where we have the bra m a ket n, where we have the integral of psi star m 
A psi n. Two different states are said to be orthogonal if their integral over all space or their in overlap integral indicated by this bracket is equal to zero. And they're orthonormal if they're both orthogonal and normalized. So if if m equals n here, then it's 1, and if n, m does not equal n, then it is 0, and that's indicated by this Kronecker delta. The superposition principle indicates what happens when we have a wave function which is not in an eigenstate of our Hamiltonian. So our wave function can be represented as a sum of all the eigenfunctions, these ket n's here, with some coefficient in front of them, a linear combination of those individual eigenvectors. And because those are all eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian, they are orthonormal to one another. And when you're in a superposition, we have the expectation value of a property like the energy for which it, um, the operator is, and is these individual states are eigenfunctions of that operator, of the Hamiltonian in this case. Then we can simply calculate that expectation value by doing a sum over all the states of this uh, leading coefficient squared times the energy of that individual state. And the probability of measuring any individual energy, because remember when we measure we don't get the expectation value, we only yield the eigenvalues as said by postulate 3, and the probability of measuring any specific energy in any specific state is indicated by the square of the coefficient for that state in the wave function. If you have two operators which commute, then A and B they will have the same eigenfunctions. They will have the same set of eigenfunctions, these ket ends here. So, for example, position and momentum do not commute, thus they do not have the same eigenfunctions, and that leads to the fact that you cannot measure both uh, simultaneously to arbitrary precision or arbitrary accuracy. The time dependence of the wave function, that is going from the time-independent wave function psi of x to the time-dependent wave function psi of xt, if you're just having the spatial dimension x, if you're in an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, then the time dependence is just accounted for by tacking on this complex exponential part. It's e to the minus i, i being the square root of minus 1, uh, times the energy times time divided by the reduced Planck's constant, h bar. And more generally, if you're in a, a state which is not an eigenfunction but is a, a linear combination or a superposition of states, then each state has its individual time dependence tacked on there. So you have the coefficient for each individual state, you have its spatial part, and you have its time part tacked on. And that is summed over uh, state 1 all the way up to state infinity. If you're in an eigenfunction here, you're in what's called a stationary state because expectation values will not change over time. Whereas if you do a superposition where you include many different states with some non-zero coefficient here, you can get waves which move back and forth and you have varying expectation values over time. Wave function collapse happens when you start in a superposition where you have multiple states where you have some non-zero coefficient here, Cn. And if you have such a superposition and you measure something like the energy, you'll have a probability of measuring any specific energy depending on what the coefficient for that state is. As we said, the probability is the square of the coefficient for that state. But now once you've measured the energy, the wave function is said to be collapsed and it is now entirely in that state uh, n there. And if we measure the energy again, we will not have a distribution of probabilities of each energy, we will have a 100% chan chance of measuring the same energy we measured the first time because the wave function is now just psi n. It has collapsed into the individual eigenstate that we were concerned with.